Welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are brewing a beer that I never thought that I would be brewing. We are going to be doing a pumpkin ale. I know that's a very controversial beer for some people, uh, and it is by far the most experimental beer that I've ever brewed, but I am excited to walk through it with you guys and see how it turns out in the end. Uh, I am sorry that I have not released a video the last couple of weeks. Um, we weren't able to brew. We were out in Denver for the Great American Beer Festival where we were awarded a gold medal for our Irish Red Ale. Uh, I have that video on our page, which I will link to it in the description, but we are very excited to be able to announce that. Uh, now back to the pumpkin ale. It is uh, very wide in range. Ours is gonna be more of an amber, um, so we can get more of a bready base with those pumpkin flavors. Uh, but I'm gonna walk you through the, the flavor profile I'm hoping for, the malts we're using, the hops, the water profile, the yeast that we're gonna use, um, I'm also going to walk you through our process, the, the mash, uh, mash out, the sparge, the boil, the whirlpool, knockout, fermentation, when we add the pumpkins, when we add the spices, what spices we add, uh, and at the very end, we're going to be walking through a uh, tasting uh, guide. So stick with us and enjoy. The water profile will vary just a little bit based on the kind of pumpkin beer that you want to brew. Ours is going to be an amber, which has a water profile of 50 parts per million of calcium, 10 parts per million of sodium, 60 parts per million of sulfate, and 70 parts per million of chloride. To get that, I will be adding calcium chloride, gypsum, epsom salt, and a little bit of canning salt to round that sodium amount for more of a fuller flavor. I'll be adding these to the mash tun and the sparge water uh, to make sure that water profile is consistent throughout the whole process. Uh, right now I have the hot liquor tank filling up with our uh, mash water. Once that is at the right volume of temperature, I'll move that into the mash tun so we can mash in. But before that, let's go over the malts that we're gonna be using. All right, we have all of our malts over here. We have the rice holes on top for that stability. And then we have that nice crush underneath. So for malt selection, let's see here, we are going to really want a rich, malty, ready, and toasty base. I really want a nice accompanying backbone with that pumpkin flavor that's gonna be coming in. So to do this, I'm going to be using a mix of Maris Otter and Munich for the base. Uh, I'm gonna do more Maris Otter, around 60 to 70% of the whole grain bill will be that Maris, just to build a rich, malty, bready base. Similarly, for the Munich, for more malty readiness, about 15 to 20% of the whole grain bill. For the specialties, I have three that I'm gonna use for this recipe around five to seven percent of victory for just a little bit of nuttiness about five percent of a uh, caramel crystal malt i used caramel munich three from best malts for this uh, this will build up a bread crust flavor and then a toasty aroma uh, and last but not least i use about half a percent of the whole grain bill in chocolate malt just for a slight color adjustment so they get just a little bit more amber um, so those are all the malts we use the mash tun is ready so let's mash in This is our mashing setup for the pumpkin ale. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our wort pump into the lower herms, coming out of the upper herms to maintain that temperature. And it is continuously recirculating to set up that grain bed. Now, the pumpkin ale, I want there to be sufficient residual sweetness afterwards. And I've mentioned it before on this channel, but there's two good ways you can do that. One is to mash a little bit higher on 156 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes to have more alpha amylase active during your mash and that will make more um, unfermentable sugars and dextrins to add body to your beer. Uh, or you can use a lower attenuating yeast strain such as an English ale yeast and that will have a less fermentability and provide more body to your beer. I'm going to go with the latter. I'm going to use an English ale yeast for this recipe. So I am mashing at 152 degrees for 60 minutes. Once that 60 minutes is up, we will mash out at 168 degrees. But before that, I want to talk about the pumpkins and how we are going to use them. The type of pumpkin that you use is crucial to the quality of the pumpkin beer that you're going to produce. You want to use one of the baking pumpkins as opposed to the typical jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. The uh, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins do not have much of that flesh that you're going to want to use, and they won't provide as much of a sweet flavor that you're looking for in the final product. Uh, to do this, you can use either pie pumpkins, sugar pumpkins, Dickinson, or, or even some of the squashes 
but make sure you do a little bit of research on that pumpkin and make sure that it is suitable for baking. Uh, that is a key part to making a pumpkin beer. Once you decide on which pumpkin you want to use, you have to decide on how much you want to use. Uh, typically, you use three to five pounds per gallon uh, of beer that you're going to produce. We went on the higher end. I really wanted to get more of a pumpkin flavor in this beer. So we used five pounds per gallon, we made 110 gallons, so 110 pounds of pumpkins, which was a beast to prepare. Uh, speaking of preparing, you can't put the pumpkins in raw right into the boil kettle. You're going to have to prepare them a little bit beforehand. Uh, to do this, you will cut the pumpkins in half and scoop out all of the guts and the seeds. You don't want any of that into the beer. Uh, and then you're going to sprinkle it liberally with brown sugar. For us, we used about a total of eight pounds of brown sugar amongst all of those pumpkins. Uh, then bake them in an oven for at about 350 degrees until they're soft. For us, that was about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, once that is finished, you want to peel the skin off of those pumpkins and store them in a clean, uh, airtight container, but don't lose those juices. When you're baking the brown sugar on those pumpkins, that brown sugar will caramelize. Uh, and the juices that come off, you definitely want to keep and add those to the boil. So put those into a clean um, uh, bowl and then cover that and put that in the fridge until you're ready to use it on the brew day. On the brew day, you're going to want to let the pumpkins and the pumpkin juices warm up to room temperature. You don't want them dropping the temperature of that boil too much when you add them in. Um, also, you don't want to add the pumpkin straight into the boil kettle. It will cause a huge mess just putting the pumpkins in there raw. I recommend adding them to a mesh bag. I ordered some of the bags to use to steam lobsters off of Amazon. They were, uh, the mesh was fine enough and the pumpkins are still solid enough that they won't squeeze out the sides. And when it was time to clean up, I just pulled the bags right out of the boil kettle and it was very easy. I added about five pounds per bag, which was a ton of bags for me. But for you guys, it will be much more manageable. Unfortunately, it was a very hectic day with the pumpkin, so I didn't get a ton of video of the actual event, but I do have some pictures that I'll talk over to show you what we did and how we did it. These are the pumpkins after we took them out of the oven. You can see that the caramelization did occur and all those juices that are still in the pumpkins, we absolutely want to save those and add those to the boil at the same time as the pumpkins. This is the pumpkin right before we added it to the boil kettle. It still has a lot of juices on there along with that caramelization from the brown sugar. And this is how we added it to the boil kettle. We put them into these bags. The holes were fine enough to keep the pumpkins inside, but the wart was still able to access those pumpkins and retrieve the juices and flavors. So now that we've seen the pumpkins, let's get back to the brew day. We just finished mashing, so now we are mashing out. The same setup, pulling wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our pump into the Herms coil, uh, going into the lower, coming out of the upper, but now the hot liquor tank is heating up to about 176 degrees. Uh, that will raise the temperature of this mash up to 168 degrees through that recirculation. Um, once we get to 168 degrees, we will begin to sparge. We just got to 168 degrees, so now we are sparging, pulling wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our wort pump, except this time I switched the lever from the Herms coil to the boil kettle. So it is now filling up the boil kettle. It's also heating up to reduce that time it takes to get the boil. At the same time, I'm pulling uh, sparge water from the hot liquor tank, pushing it through our water pump and rinsing all the residual sugars that are left in those grains. We just got to a boil, so we will boil for 90 minutes. Uh, we will add the pumpkins in around the 30 minute mark. We will add the pumpkin juices in around the 30 minute mark as well. Um, Spices will go in the last five minutes, which we'll cover in a second. But before both of those, let's go over the hops that we're going to be using. For the hops, I didn't want any hop flavor or aroma coming through. I just wanted some bitterness to counteract that sweetness. So I add around 17 to 20 IBUs worth of a clean hop. Uh, for this recipe, I use Magnum, but you can use any uh, clean hop that you would like. Last but certainly not least are the pumpkin pie spices. You're going to want to use cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. All three of these will pair perfectly for this pumpkin beer. For the cinnamon, you're going to want to use for a five gallon batch, three to five teaspoons. Um, one cinnamon stick is about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. For nutmeg, you're going to want to use one half to one teaspoon uh, based on how much spice you want. Same with the ginger, one half to one teaspoon per five gallons. Uh, add these in the last five minutes of the boil. 
you can always add more spices if you want to, but you cannot take any out. So I start on the lower end, and then if I'd like to, add a little bit more towards the end just to get that spice profile right where I want. We just finished the boil, so now we are starting the whirlpool, pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the tangential input to create a vortex inside of that boil kettle that will pull all of the hops, the proteins, to the center of the boil kettle so we do not push it over during knockout. We will whirlpool this for 10 minutes, then we will let it wind down for 10 minutes, and then we will be back for knockout. We just started knockout, so we are pulling wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump, going through our heat exchanger, we're going through at about 66 degrees with our oxygen going through in the sight glass. Going all the way down here as you see the excess air going out as we fill up the fermenter. For the pumpkin beer, we wanted to use a lower attenuating strain to help build up some body and sweetness. So we use the English ale yeast from White Labs. We ferment the pumpkin beer at 67 degrees for about a week or until it is about four points away from terminal gravity. We will then raise it to 72 degrees for the diacetyl rest, cold crash it to 33 degrees, like we did in fermenting vessel number one. Transfer it to our bright tank, carbonate it to 2.6 volumes, keg it, and enjoy. All right, this is what we made. It is a beautiful amber color, it has an off-white head, and then with some light behind it, you can see that it is clear. So those mesh bags did work in keeping the pumpkin contained and not making the beer hazy. Uh, for the smell, I get a lot of the pumpkin pie spices. I don't get much hop or malt, which is good. I wanted the pumpkin to come through. For the taste, there is a nice body. This is definitely more pumpkin pie oriented. It's not so much pumpkin spice. If you want pumpkin spice, use more of the spices than what I recommended earlier. Uh, but for if you want a pumpkin pie beer, this is the way to go. It is smooth. The bitterness is just enough. I wouldn't call it bitter, but it is counteracting some of the sweetness. Overall, this is a pumpkin beer that I would drink. We're over the age of 21. We do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. Oh, my worst one yet. Cheers. If you'd like to see more brewing content like this, make sure you click that subscribe button right below uh, and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments. Cheers.